Stranger Things Season 4 has knocked it out of the park again. The blend we always knew we wanted of 80s music, parallel dimensions filled with scary, moist monsters, and superpowers. Stranger Things has been busy blowing our minds and making us feel the feels, but has it been playing fast and loose when it comes to the physics? Is the upside down actually upside down? Can you communicate between parallel dimensions? And how is this bedsheet rope staying in place? Warning, this video contains spoilers for Stranger Things Season 3 and Season 4. If you haven't watched it yet, go on and do so, come on. Then let's take a deep dive and look at five times that Stranger Things left physicists scratching their heads. never stop being curious to always open any curiosity door we find dustin why are you keeping this curiosity door locked number one at the epic conclusion of season three to close the door to the upside down and kill the creature attempting to destroy 1985 hawkins indiana police chief jim hopper and perpetually intense joyce byers infiltrate a secret russian base underneath starcourt mall hoping to open a safe containing the keys to disable the portal between worlds the necessary code to open the safe set by Russian physicists, like all good physicists are prone to do, comes from a universal constant. Specifically, the Russian scientists used the digits of Planck's constant, or h-bar, which links the amount of energy a photon carries with the frequency of its electromagnetic wave. Naturally, the gang doesn't know the answer, but Dustin knows his camp girlfriend Susie will do and he calls her on his homemade ham radio. After a brief musical interlude, Susie provides Planck's constant as 6.62607004. But the thing is, it's not. Or at least it wasn't back in 1985. In 1985, the accepted value for Planck's constant was 6.626176. Times 10 to the minus 34, which is the bit they don't include. The change in Planck's constant is due to an improvement in our ability to do two experimental techniques known as Kibble Balance and Avogadro's method. These have since shifted Planck's constant down by about 15 parts per billion, from its earlier value, which would have been known in 1985, only reaching the value that Susie quoted, 6.62607004 times 10 to the minus 34, in about 2018. This is an important value because when you get down to the level of quantum mechanics, things behave differently. The amount of energy a system can contain becomes discrete, like rungs on a ladder. Those rungs of that ladder are separated by h-bar times the frequency of a quantum object. This leaves us at the end of the day with one of two conclusions. Number one, the writers did an oopsie. Or number two, much more likely, Susie is just really, really smart. I know which one my money is on. Number two, communicating through parallel dimensions. Season four revealed that no surprises there, the Upside Down isn't easily closed off. We see Nancy, Steve, Robin, and Eddie slip into the Upside Down through a portal, wormhole, watergate, and struggle to get back. Earlier established in season one is the idea that you can communicate between the Upside Down and the real world. But how realistic is it to move information between dimensions? Nancy ultimately works out that using the lights, or in physics terms, by influencing the electromagnetic field around the light, she can communicate with the real world and send an SOS to the rest of the gang. Communicating between parallel universes or extra dimensions or parallel realities, it's not exactly clear what's happening here, but actually there is some real basis for this reality in some theories, specifically string theory or M theory. The possibility of communicating between parallel dimensions was actually one of the reasons that extra dimensions were first theorized, but it wasn't due to the electromagnetic force. It was actually because of gravity, specifically how weak gravity is by comparison to the other fundamental forces. And now you might say here that gravity surely isn't weak. It keeps us pinned down to the earth and it spins us around the sun. But keep in mind that a single fridge magnet weighing just a couple of grams can overpower gravity and lift up a paperclip, even though the entire mass of the Earth is trying to pull it down. We also notice a problem with gravity when we go out to measure the movement of stars around a galaxy. We calculate that mass must be missing from that galaxy if the force moving those stars is only being exerted by gravity. We've called this dark matter because we can't see it, but maybe it's something more like a structure present in a different dimension. Looking for an answer to these sorts of questions, researchers found that if they encoded extra dimensions into the fabric of reality, specifically a total of about 11 dimensions, up, down, left, right, forwards, backwards in space, as well as forwards and backwards in time, plus seven others, 
then our universe actually starts to make sense. If what we feel as gravity is actually a force acting on us from one of these other dimensions, and only some of its effects actually reach us and are felt in our macroscopic world. It's a little bit crazy, but both a real justification for the reason why extra dimensions of Stranger Things might actually exist, and why it might be possible to transmit information between these dimensions, but that flickering the lights maybe isn't the right fundamental force to do the communicating, as electromagnetism is thought to be reasonably well confined to the dimension that we currently live in. Mistake number three, to help the gang escape the upside down, Dustin throws a knotted bedsheet through the portal, which hovers above the ground on both sides of the portal, seemingly perfectly balanced. What is actually going on here? In theory, this could actually happen. If you throw a long object through a portal where gravity was pointing equal and opposite, if you didn't throw it so hard that it traveled all the way through the portal, it would come to a steady state equilibrium position. The problem comes though, if you go and try and climb it. Unless there's a heavier mass on the other side holding it down by applying a force to the rope, you'll break this balance and just end up pulling the rope towards you through the portal. Now you could maybe argue here that there is a mechanism of action at the horizon of the portal itself that's imparting some sort of friction or some sort of resistance to hold the rope in place, but as the gang is able to pull, physically pull themselves through the portal, Newton's law tells us that equal and opposite force must be being exerted on that rope. So that rope again, if they can pass through it, would be able to pass through the portal itself. To sidestep this problem, having Dustin and co hold on to the bedsheets in the real world would have solved this. Might even have looked cool to watch them essentially fishing for their friends and reeling them in, but probably would have been harder to film and would have involved dropping members of the cast onto other members of the cast, so we'll let this one slide. But that brings us to the fourth point. This dimension is commonly referred to as the upside down, but is it actually upside down? When the gang falls through the gate at the bottom of the lake, it intersects with the gate at the bottom of a dry lake in the upside down. However, when they travel back through the portal in the trailer home to return back to the real world, this also overlaps with the ceiling of the trailer home in the real world. The name the upside down lends itself to the visual idea that it's directly under and upside down from the real world. This is strengthened by some cinematic shots we see, as well as the scene where the gang climbs up the knotted bedsheet to get home. Gravity seems to be working pointing in opposite directions. However, if both portals overlap in both locations like this, then it can't be true. It can't actually be upside down. It needs to be the right way up, and it needs to be overlapping with the real world. But the thing is, in the bedsheet scene, it definitely looks upside down, so what's actually happening? It's actually maybe a little bit less weird than it sounds, it's less of an upside down dimension, and more of a mirror dimension. A mirror, most people would say, flips left and right, because it looks like when you wave your right hand, your left hand waves back to you. But why is it only left and right that's reversed, and not up and down? We know intuitively that it isn't, but it's a surprising question to try and answer if this is the first time that you've ever been asked it. The shorthand rule that most of us are taught is that mirrors flip left and right, which isn't actually true. They flip what's closer to the mirror with what's further away from the mirror. They flip inside out or front to back. So final point, point five, the gang haven't been traveling to the upside down this whole time. They have in fact been traveling to the inside out, which explains why all the monsters are so gross looking and moist. That's it, case closed on this one. Dear Duffer Brothers, if you want me to consult on season five, I'm just a phone call away, hit me up. What else did you spot that maybe I missed? Am I wrong about interdimensional travel? Why is moist such a horrible word? Leave me a comment down below and let me know what you think. If you like this video, you might like a video I did ages ago on Minkowski space and why you can't travel faster than the speed of light. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Goodbye. Oh,